We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you, Ben? I'm doing great. We Thanks, have Patrick. Squeaky chair. Um, we're in like our 14th location since <laughs> you left your you left your office. Uh, we're still finding a new home, but we've got a plant in this one, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we are going so, to yeah between two ferns. Is that what it's yeah called? yeah Zach Galifianakis. We, we have one fern. I don't know if that's a fern. One plant. One plant. Um, we are. This is the first time I've seen you since the games. So we always, or at least we usually, uh, take the opportunity kind of post games. Uh, first recording to just get your thoughts, get your takeaways, get your um, whatever lessons you're pulling to kind of go forward to the next year. So that's what we're going to do again this time around. Uh, I think you've got like some maybe five or 10 big kind of takeaways. Uh, so we're just going to list through uh, and talk through each one, see what cool. you've got, see what you're pulling back from the games. Um, before we get into the specifics, just like high level thoughts on the games, we had some uh, new people at least i don't know exactly what to call new but obviously uh dave castro is no longer kind of head of programming we've got justin we've got adrian uh big picture like thought big picture thoughts on just like whatever changes you kind of identify or notice when you were there so i think that the word you just used there changes was the biggest thing mm. is that there was changes um there's a big question mark right is um is Boz, Adrian Bosman, just going to continue the legacy of what it was, or is he going to try to put his stamp on what he believes the test should be? And he did the latter, right? Mm -hmm. He definitely put his stamp on what he thinks the test should be. And it felt new. It felt fresh. It felt different. It felt challenging. It felt the way the games felt early on Mm -hmm. when the games was trying to establish itself. So the first year of the games, a little historical reference here, the first year of the games, it was just three events. Yep. There was the total, there was a trail run, um, and then it was this um, chipper, okay. like basically essentially a Jackie yep. type workout. Yep. And that was the totality of the games, three events. The next year of the games became very strength biased, a few short, higher power workouts. And because of that, everyone went to this strength bias Mm -hmm. program. The next year, the games opens up with a 7K trail run. Everyone's like, oh my God. (laughs) And it's these multiple smash fest days. Maybe one of the hardest games ever just in terms of today it wouldn't be, but the leaps and bounds it took that year. And then the next year it pulled back a little bit and then we end up in California and then it starts to settle a little bit by Mm -hmm. 2014, 15. And then essentially from... 2015-ish to last year, six years, it's pretty much been status quo. Mm -hmm. We know we're going to get a snatch. We know we're going to get a clean and jerk. We know, and you kind of just kind of like, yeah, it's varied, but not unknown. Mm -hmm. And this year, the, the apple cart got completely tipped over and it was very, very new and fresh again Mm -hmm. in a fun and exciting way. Yep. Cool. Okay. Let's dive into your takeaways. I'm sure we'll get more into the the big picture and small picture as we go. Uh, how do you want to do this? You want to do... So I'll do through? like, yeah. So why don't I do... I, I have about 10. So why don't we do, um, instead of like ranting and then raving or vice versa, why don't I give one positive, one cool. negative? Let's do it. And All right. We'll, we'll, we'll start with positive. Yep. Okay. So first one is kind of what we just mentioned is the the number of new movements that showed up. So... It's kind of wild, but this being the 16th year of the CrossFit Games, we about half of the workouts had new movements in mm. them. That's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Usually the CrossFit Games, they might introduce one, maybe two new things. Like yep. now we have a pig. Now we're going to push a snail. Yeah, usually it's an implement. That- it's an implement. Yeah. Here's one new thing. And about half of the workouts had new implements this year, which is wild. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's super exciting. um, And it made for a very fresh approach where every single workout was kind of, whoa, this is really just that exciting. Mm -hmm. So that was one big 
Um, I think that's a, as a massive positive because the, I don't want to say that the sport has gotten stale because it certainly is not. It's hard to make the sport stale, yep. but it had gotten uh, somewhat repetitive Yep. and the ability to put in things like, and the legitimate tests, um, um, walking across parallel bars into static dips, yep. never seen before. Legless pegs, never seen before. Um, seated L-sit rope climbs, they got taken out, but never seen mm, before. Right. There was um, enough movements. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other one. Oh, the, the difference in the handstand push-ups that was in the echo yep. workout from off of blocks, like never seen that yep. before. The and different, facing the... And face, facing, yeah. exactly. The jump rope variations. Yep. We've only seen double unders. Now it's singles and crosses and yep. um, the up and over implements that we saw jumping over. It was just like, okay, this is, it. it's cool to see that we can still go unknown and unknowable, even though we're cracking into 20 years, almost two decades of the sport. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Love that. All right, um, let's flip flop and do maybe a, a, I don't know what we want to call it, but. A okay. So the, it's not, this is um, not really a negative but something that a lot of the test was execution. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily just fitness. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but it was pass fail. Mm -hmm. It's like, can you do the movement? And if you can do the movement, you essentially kind of get to move to the next thing. Can you do legless pegboards? If you can, you pass. Mm -hmm. And now can you do the single leg pistols yep. if you can cool you pass can you do the double under crosses if you yep. can good you pass can you do a pirouette into a and mm, so on about that one. yep mm. so and then it's kind of like the row can you row 1k mm -hmm. under a 137.5 average if you can cool you pass and you move on can you d even things like the run jerk was like can you run this fast enough to have time to be able to jerk and it's like it wasn't necessarily just run jerk it was you have to have this one to be able to do this one yeah. you weren't able to work on um compensatory pluses and minuses it was like you need it was kind of like the old school fitness standards test that mm. used to be in crossfit you need to be able to do all 10 of these before you move to level two. Yep. You need to be able to do all 10 of these before you move to level three. And it felt a little bit like that. Do you have these skill sets instead of just who has this work capacity, who has this strength and so on. So, mm -hmm. so you couldn't like, it was harder to make up room in a workout exactly. where if you couldn't do the one thing, if the workout had been run yeah. jerk and you're a slower runner, but you're a stronger lifter. Yep. Okay. That's going to balance out yep. as opposed to here's the run, here's the jerk. Yep. Instead of like, can you run row? And then can you, do, it's like, can you do the, it's just like, here's all the skills. Can you pass the test and so on? So not, that's my least, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just not something that I was pumped about. Yep. Got it. Okay. Third thing. Let's go back to positive. Okay. Um, the fact that they are, and it's kind of like, these are kind of all sit in the same neighborhood a little bit, but it's nice to see the gymnastics requirements be elevated. Mm -hmm. If you think of our sport in terms of three different domains, in terms of um, your strength, your skills, gymnastics, and your um, conditioning, your model structural, run, row, bike, ski, and so on. Under the previous regime, Dave Castro, there's a lot, it's, we saw a massive requirement for strength. Mm -hmm. Essentially, any top level CrossFitter could walk into the American Open and qualify mm -hmm. with their strength numbers. Mm -hmm. They, nobody could do that in a track and field event because we weren't asked to do it. No one's numbers. So pretty, for example, um, a CrossFitter, a high level CrossFitter would have about a 355 pound clean and jerk. That qualifies for sure for that weight class, that qualifies them for the American Open, mm -hmm. for sure. That's 
So that's really, really high level strength abilities. It makes sense. We saw true one rep max cleans by themselves and jerks and snatches every single year. Yep. But our gymnastics requirements were so low. Let's do some muscle ups. Let's do some pegboards. Let's do some box jumps. Let's do some alternating pistols. Let's do some hands. This year, man, we got back to the roots. And it's written right into 100 words of fitness. Practice. Handstands, pirouettes, dips. Like we saw those things. Dips. We saw pirouettes. We saw the requirements went up a lot. Mm -hmm. Now there's also, and bridges to presses. Um, I'm sorry, um, uh, presses to, uh, the L-sit to press. Yep. That's written right into 100 Words of Fitness. So while some of those things were sort of, I don't want to say ignored, but not emphasized in the previous regime, and other things were, we kind of moved, we swung the pendulum a bit towards the, the gymnastics stuff. And that's phenomenal. That's really good. We should be there. This isn't the negatives, but we still have... Maybe we saw this, the tiniest little bit of that in the gymnastics, I'm sorry, in the conditioning one as well, is like, you need to be able to row this 1K in this 137.5 average. Mm -hmm. So we just touched it a little bit, but it would also be cool to see, which we haven't, that kind of edge towards, like, we should be able to run sub five minute miles. Mm -hmm. And if we tested that, or if we tested who can do the sub, you know, 210, 800s. Like we should be able to, let's see that. If we tested those things, just like we test pure strength, mm -hmm. pure strength, we've never tested pure gymnastics. We've never tested pure conditioning. It would be nice to be able to do that as mm -hmm. well. So that was a cool thing to be able to see. Yep. Um, but that's kind of also, that leads to number three, which is besides the row, we are, we're not there yet on the conditioning side. Mm -hmm. So I love that of the three things, strength thing has been there. It's been there for a long time. feels like gymnastics has now been elevated. I would like to see a, an, an additional move towards it on the monostructural side as mm -hmm. well, which we just got a taste of with the 1K row. Got it. Would the bike fall into that or is No, that... because it's like, it's just blended into it. If yeah. the bike was um, 20 minute FP, at, what's your 20 minutes yep. max test? And they did it for um, the masters. They did a 5K pure straight up bike. Yep. I'm sorry, not 5K, five minute pure test. So then we're getting there, right? Back, way back in the day, they tested an 800 meter run, but we haven't seen that really. I'm saying like, we test the singular thing. Yep. The singular. If it's not, if it's blended into something, it's not the pure test. Yep. And very, very, very rarely do we ever see a pure test of anything other than clean, jerk, snatch, dead, yep. front squat, back squat. Yep. You know, whenever we see a run, it's intermixed with something else, or it's a seven k trail run, mm -hmm. which okay, but we don't know how to compare that to the world class. So we don't know what our ability is. I don't know if we're scared to show it or not, mm -hmm. but what is our one mile run? Right. What is our 2K row? What yep. is our, if we're doing it for clean, straight up, measurable, here's the best in the world for clean, jerk, snatch, dead, squat. Cool. That's where we stand in CrossFitters. Where are we with the other gymnastics? Where are mm -hmm. we with the other model structural? Mm -hmm. We should know that and not swim in the ocean. No, what's our 500 meter swim yep. in a pool so we can measure it against the best. Mm, interesting. Is there a, what is the core, what is the version for gymnastics? Cause you think about gymnastics and, and like quote unquote, like proper gymnastics. Yeah, it's, it's skills and abilities, skill. yeah. right? So it's so like, what is the, what is the pure test in your we're mind? We're getting, for? that's what we did this year. Yeah. We're totally getting there with like the, the press to handstand yep. with the pirouette, but we're like, you know, the next thing that hasn't been tested that's in that hundred words is splits mm. and flips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flips. Yep. So, okay. Can we do flips back in the day on main site? They showed a whole bunch of athletes doing backflips. Yep. So can our athletes do backflips? Mm. Now, can we test that safely? Bur burpee back. They backflips. did a great job this year. I thought a great job of figuring out how to test the press to handstand. Yep. So. Can we test the flips? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have the answer to that, but can we test splits? I don't know. I don't know how you do that, but 
it feels like we're edging there on the on the gymnastic side yep. more so than we are on the monostructural. Yep. The monostructural is easy. Yeah. Easy. Bring them to a track, on a track four yeah. times around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not yeah. and not and people are gonna go, no, they've tested that, they've tested that. No, they haven't. If it's on a if it's on a road course, it's not measurable, observable, repeatable. It's not science. You can't compare it. Yep. It needs to be those three things. Measurable, like measure on a track yep. it has to be there don't tell me the 1.5 mile run with the toes to bar from two years ago was them comparing mile it's not yeah don't tell me the 3.5 mile run because is that 3.5 mile run really 3.5 miles or was it 3.48 mm-hmm. or 3.52 and what about the and they did game. a pig flip beforehand yeah. and it was up hills and it's like courses are different it's true straight up just like they build a platform and give people olympic lifting equipment right. for the olympic lifts so it's completely measurable observable and repeatable let's do that for the other things love that okay next one i think this is number 5 uh, i'm keeping track correctly i really loved the fact that you know i think it took besides um day 1 we saw a jerk and i think day 2 well day 2 is weird cuz day 2 is uh, but um, essentially the f- second real day we saw squat cleans in Elevate Elizabeth. I don't think we saw like, I think we made it like halfway through the competition almost without a barbell. Yeah. I love that. I think the barbell is the greatest training tool that's ever been created. But it should be that. It should be used as a training tool to make you fitter so that that can then be used to express with Mm non-barbells. Otherwise, we're testing training. Mm -hmm. In our sport, we should be testing who has the greatest breadth and depth Mm -hmm. of capabilities. And we should be using, just like football players use the barbell to become better football players, we should be using the barbell to become better at... um, being explosive over obstacle courses. And because we believe in it as a training tool, Mm. but less as a testing tool. I thought the use of the barbell this year was phenomenally implemented. Mm -hmm. And then towards the end, we had that really barbell intensive piece, which I actually loved. The speed down and back with the back nine and end up with, you know, the squat cleans and the deadlifts and cool. Like we saved it towards the end, but gosh, we had like, so many tests that didn't involve a barbell and that to me is the way this sport should be not saying we shouldn't use it in training because it's the greatest training tool that's ever been invented we should continue to use it but we should be using it as a thing that transfers to other stuff and we should be testing the other stuff love so love that yep um what i didn't love kind of the same thing in terms of format type stuff is Intervals are an amazing training tool. They're not a good spectacle testing tool. uh, Mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. If you were at the games in multiple events, the announcer, the play, by the way, the place is packed, Mm -hmm. packed, like, which is so cool. The announcers multiple times were saying, why are you so quiet, Madison? Let's hear you (laughs) cheer. And it's so easy the reason they're not cheering is there was nothing to cheer for. Yep. In an interval-based workout, you don't know who's winning. Yep. So you don't even know who's winning when the event is over. You have to wait 20 minutes for them to update the scoreboard to know who won. So where is the drama and where is the excitement? There is no excitement. So examples of this. The multiple run into jerks. Yep. And you're... Score for the run is the accumulative time across three different ones with three different distances. Mm -hmm. In the second one, you have no idea who's in first place. You have no idea who's in first. You have no idea who's in second. You're just watching people run up and down a field. And even the person that's in first, you don't know if they're in first. It's sort of ludicrous in terms of a spectacle. It's really... I'm actually surprised about HQ with this. And this is a this is like programming 101 for an event. You could have one event in the games, maybe like this. The only event that I remember that they've ever done this with was at the pool with the Echo Bike, GHEs, and Slam Balls during 2020. And the reason they could do it there well was because there were no fans. Yeah. It was, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So <laughs> yep. when they do it as a broadcast later on, they can tell you who's yep. 
in the lead and who's not. But for an in real life event, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. They are terrible spectacles. Because again, with the jerks, you have no idea who's winning. So the announcers are going, why are you so quiet? The reason they're so quiet is because what are we going to cheer for? Like you're going to go, come on, Tia, get one more. Like, <laughs> right. yep. it's kind of, and it didn't show up that once. It was that event. It was also the, um, the swim event. You don't know who's winning. Totally. Yep. It's like, okay, like more swimming, yep. more swimming, more skiing. You don't really know what's going on. Yeah. There's this little board up there, but it's impossible to read. You have no idea who's won until mm-hmm. they post it at the end. And then the, the race down the wall balls, the squat snatches over multiple events. Yeah. That, that person, Guy won the first one, but he didn't win the second one. Who's winning. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, there's no drama. There's no excitement. Yep. So Loved the format in terms of less barbells, but did not like, because barbells, great training tools, not, shouldn't be the number one thing we're testing. Kind of the opposite for this one. Intervals, great training tools. We should be using them in training, but not the best testing yep. piece. Got it. Next. Um, kind of saying with the, the no barbell thing. Mm-hmm. HQ really um, pulled a rabbit out of their hat this year in the semifinals when they went away for one of the first times from a one rep max for their strength test. Mm -hmm. Especially a one rep max snatch is um, I know everybody loves it, but it's actually the least I don't say that because there's like deadlifts and backs, but it's very low drama slash excitement because within a second or two it's over it's just mm-hmm. oh, miss yep. oh lift and just the standing up that's excitement yep a clean and jerk is more because here's the clean yep. squat oh there's right. more grind yep. most people if they catch the snatch they're going to stand it up not necessarily the case for a clean there's more points to like more places to screw up exactly <laughs> did he get under it yep. is she going to stand it up is she going to get it overhead? Is she going to stand that up? More place for drama. Well, in semifinals, they figured out even more by doing a complex. Yeah. Yep. And when you have a complex, now the drama really builds, especially over multiple reps. Well, they kind of figured that out a little bit to like, how long can an athlete suffer and struggle yep. with the one rep max? And they nailed it with the bag. Yep. Because the bag yeah. is... Um, if you're Cole Sager <laughs> is 49 seconds of struggling and you know, the crowd wants to yeah. will you through it. Yep. And that's when it gets to be this really cool thing. They could have done a better job. I thought with the format of it, yep. but in terms of the test for the strength also love that it's new, yep. different. No one trained that. I, yep. I promise you. Because athletes don't have that equipment. Yeah. We've been training for the sport for 15 years you know, and we don't have it. Yeah. And that was an amazing, awesome. And it speaks test. to your your point before about barbell being a great training tool. But let's see how that transfers love to it. something strange, right? So something cool. different. Yeah, it's so cool. So yep. love, love, love that as a test. And um, right when they announced it, that's where my head went. It was like, yes, this is going to create the drama. Yep. It's like, can you create the drama? The exact opposite of what they were doing with those interval tests. Yeah. No drama. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it should be a spectacle. It's interesting. It makes me think there's a, there's, uh, I remember you guys training with it, but there's, you guys have like heavy D balls here and it was, there's, it always makes for interesting drama to, to be like, okay, max hold for time, yeah. this, whatever, hundred pound D ball, 200, whatever the, the weight is. Something like that is really interesting. Cause it's like, okay, everybody's going to get to a certain point. And then it's like, all right, who's grimacing, who's yeah. letting go, who's, who's shaking. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's strength but it's strength and back come kind of to your point of that kind of introducing a, a level of drama that makes the viewing experience elevated but also is an interesting test of well, it has to first sure. and foremost has to be a legitimate test right and i don't know anybody that's going to argue that who who can put the most weight from the ground up to their shoulders sure. isn't a good test of strength 100 like yeah. That's what strength is, a productive application of force. Can you move an external load from point A to point B? That's such a great, especially against gravity. So not like, not necessarily a farmer's walk, not necessarily a yoke, like true strength to me is against gravity, up, not horizontal. So that's such a phenomenal test. Mm -hmm. And can you do it with good standards? Meaning like, 
not just throw it over your shoulder because did that person right. reach full? It's, yeah. it's they they like, nailed it. Yeah, really, really good. There's a couple grays where people were holding it down low, and I thought the judges did a pretty darn good job of figuring it out on the fly of yep. what the and not having is. not having checked a thousand of those yeah, reps right, before. Yeah. It, after and they knew that they only have like a split second to be like, right. is this good and or how not? How do you test that? <laughs> yeah, like who? You, this is what the other amazing. This is like kudos to them. We were talking about this afterwards. How the hell did they test that for the women? Mm. And talk about nailing the weights. They literally got down to the last bag. Yep. Had two athletes. Yep. Like Perfect. what? Yeah. Perfect. And only one athlete could do it. Mm-hmm. That's literally the most amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Like, how do you test that? Yeah. Everyone that can test that is in the competition. <laughs> right. How do you do that? Yeah. We were, I was you like. You add percentages. To I like, was like, <laughs> li- like, this is incredible. Like, they're not having alley scuds, like, to test right. that. Like, who is doing this? And maybe they did it with a super strong guy and they did percentage work yeah. down, but then they missed it on the guy's side because they had to bring out mm-hmm. two extra yeah. bags. So like, how do you, Yeah. but they nailed it. Like, kudos to them for the girl side. They were super close on the guy's. And they improvised on the fly to make it the appropriate test. And yep. man, it was like, maybe they could have started the bag um, one or two heavier because everyone passed through the first, yeah. but it also gives the athletes a chance to touch Actually, it. I don't think it was bit. wrong. Yeah. I just think that the format was a little bit wrong. They could have had more or less. I just yep. like, but anyway, I, I love that event. Yep. I think most people did. I agree. Yep. Um, Very cool. I think number eight is now. Uh, what eight. I didn't love, and I love the test, but they messed up is... Why in the world is there any confusion over how many laps people did on the bike? Mm, yeah. Like how in the world is that a question? It's not the athlete's responsibility. Mm. When your I was wondering, NASCAR yeah. does not leave it up to the cars to count their laps. <laughs> like they just don't. Right. It's so it's so part of the event. Yep. And same thing when in your in track and field. They run 5Ks on a track. Yep. It is not the athlete's responsibility to know what lap they're on. Yep. It's the event organizers. Mm, interesting. And it's so simple. You have chip timers. They're already wearing chip timers. Yep. You can't have judges counting as a girl. But every time they cross a lap, it populates it up. Yep. And you can have more drop, more excitement. This person did this lap this fast and who's closing the gap. Like what a freaking miss. Mm. The fact that there's any drama there at all about how many laps people did and they have to show this. Yep. No, look at this is Ricky coming in and this yep. is, they have to explain it at the end. Like there should be no yep. explanation for that. And then there were athletes that only did four. And then the way that they <laughs> scored it at the end Oh my, that is mm. horrific. What they did was they took their worst lap yep. and gave them credit for that. Yep. Well, let's do a five round workout. Let's do Eva. Mm-hmm. Let Eva, five rounds of 800 meter run, 30 kettlebell swings and three pups. I'm only going to do four rounds. Right. And then double, and take, double and take my, my slowest, slowest round yeah. and give me credit for that. Yep. Not only have I not finished the event, they haven't finished the event. Yeah. It's a DNF. Yeah. Like it's a DNF. You did not finish, which means as a DNF, you are in last place. And then you figure out there's five athletes that didn't finish. You're in last place plus one. And then whoever finished next is last place plus two and last place plus three. It's not, we're going to seed you in even though you haven't finished the event yet. And that presumably, and what you're doing is setting precedent. Yeah. So what you can do then, if I'm an athlete, like I'm going to skip the last round of a workout which will be my slowest, most possible. Of course. At least there's a chance of it. And just yeah. give me credit for my slowest one. That's yep. precedent has been set. Yep. Like in terms of the law, when when a ruling has been established, yep. that now is the precedent. Like you can't do it that way. It's just not in every other event. It's DNF, did not finish. Yep. And if you realize it when you come across the finish line, get back out there and go again. Yeah. Do you think that the issue is that just historically we've always... Uh, put the onus of that responsibility on the athlete. Do you think like it versus uh, a judge or a, a chip, like a time? It thing? says in the judges' course, it is the athletes and the judges' Got responsibility it. to count reps. It's both. Got it. So right there, it's both. So if one miscounts, what do we do? Yep. Mm-hmm. If the athlete miscounts, does the judge go okay? Go to the finish line. Right. Absolutely, one hundred percent not. The judge says you haven't finished yet. So what was the problem in this one? They didn't have a judge. Mm. Mm -hmm. There was no judge. Got it. 
So there was no judge counting the laps. Got it. So nobody was there to say. There's no one there to say. And this is your. And if the judge, if they're using judges, what a miss that is. What if a judge sneezes as their athlete is crossing the? It's it's really simple. This is where technology is aiding us. Is what every other event in the world does is they figure out did you run every single mile of the five k, every single lap. Yep. It's a mess. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I'd kind of forgotten about that because that was that was right at the start and the was, first one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you're you're right. Okay. Number nine. Uh, best event in the history of the CrossFit Games to me, bar none, and that's a huge statement on my part. I've been to fourteen of these things. There's been sixteen CrossFit Games. I, I love nothing more than to analyze the test um, from all aspects, from the actual test to the spectacle, to um, the the way it's laid out was the capital. Mm-hmm. To me, the capital is it was amazing. So here's a few reasons why. First, one of the best tests before this was very similar, the burden run. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're doing is testing um, multiple aspects. So, and you're testing it in um, non-traditional ways. It's not thrusters, it's not pull-ups, nothing we train all the time, but it's this horizontal displacement. Okay, I just talked about horizontal placement not being a great thing. Mm -hmm. Vertical is better for strength, but it's the best thing for the visual representation. Mm -hmm. At every single second, you know who's in front and who's behind. Unlike Fran. In Fran, it's, okay, let's watch people do thrusters and who's the first one to transition. And the only way you get to tell who's in front is when the judge hand goes up or they transition. So it's a lot of... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's, oh, it's like, and then wait, wait, wait. This is every single moment you get to watch the turtles race down the the race course. Phenomenal drama and excitement. The next is the accordion style of this, of the test, Mm -hmm. which is um, the big athletes get out in front Mm -hmm. in the pig flip and way out in front. Mm -hmm. Cool test all the way down 20 flips. So the big athletes like Amanda, who I was coaching, comes off first a minute and a half ahead of an athlete like Haley Adams. Mm -hmm. And then during the five, uh, the the three and a half mile run. Here's the chase. Here's the chase. And well-programmed, it's long enough that not only is enough for her to catch, her to catch and pass by two or three minutes. Yep. Cool, right? So now you have this, yeah. the lead dogs get out. Yep. Now there's the accordion where get the back end gets pulled in. And not only do they catch, but they extend out the other way. Mm-hmm. This is cool. And now what do you have again? Yeah, another chase. Another yeah. chase of the big ones trying to reel in the little ones. <laughs> the big ones the little, it's yeah. so, it's totally. such the best test. Yeah. It's the best test. And not only that, you have it in three different venues. You have it in the stadium. So the environment changes. In like, the real world on an open course yep. where people can literally run next to the athletes, yep. talk to them along the way, and then into this another arena-like finish yep. where the athletes are lining the sidelines reminiscent of the next one of the next best CrossFit Games events ever, which was the Sandbag Hill Sprint yep. in 2009, okay. yeah, where there, there was no course. The course was created the by the people. <laughs> yeah. And it happened again here. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to get down there, and I'm in Madison at the Capitol. And the coolest thing is there are crowds, five and six people deep on either sides of these athletes doing these carries. Yep. And you hear... People going to their 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 friends, going, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> and it's such a yeah. good representation of what the heck this is. Yeah. People struggling mightily at their at their wits' end to try to move something a few feet, and then the stairs at the end. Oh my God, how cool is that? Like. Haley Adams not being able to like pick up a bag and move it three steps, but then you have the bigger, stronger athletes yeah. trying to like, are they going to reel them in? And all of the excitement, it was, it was everything that you could possibly ask for in an event. Yeah, long enough that there's all of this, what's going to happen, but also tight enough that people aren't finishing. You know, like there's a little bit like the burden run. That was a fault of the burden run is. There, there was huge gaps between, between the first and last. Right? And once you got to a certain point, it was almost like a train. Yep. You know, once this one was not the train at all. This was 
what the heck's going to happen? Yep. Is an athlete going to, like Haley Adams is 50 yards away from the finish line and I don't know if she's going to finish. Yeah. Like, oh man, that's so, yeah. so cool. So it's a, it's an interesting, like you can almost see, you know, how people run five K's or they do what, like what, like mud runs. You can also, you can almost see Madison doing that as like every year come and uh, do a version of that, right? Like a, like a, 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 a version of that, that is accessible to more people, but it's that interesting. It's that fun. It's that, uh, different that. I so that type of an event too, like obviously like brought down, bring down the weights and you're, what you're saying is it's exactly there's no technique. Mm -hmm. It's accessible to everybody. So the pig is like so unaccessible to anybody. It's, right. a, it's like whatever is a 550 pound refrigerator yep. that you got. Like no normal human beings can yep. do that. But you could imagine something like um, another uh, implement, a mm -hmm. bag like th or a sled, a, tire or a sled, sled yeah. or a tire yeah. and you'll know, move that down yep. the field. A sled would be a great thing, yep, right? Sled would be great. Just push a sled, drag a sled, whatever it is. And then we got our run and then let's do our farmer's carries and then let's do that Husafel bag. Yeah. Like, oh man, it's yeah. awesome. Super fun. All right. I think that was ninth, uh, unless there's more, but otherwise nope. we'll go to number 10. Um, and then I think I've got one more. Yeah. Follow, this is, but... this is the dad, this is the miss. Yeah. And to me, it was the biggest miss of the weekend. You know, miss number two was the, the bike laps. Yep. Um, it was very Bush league amateur, um, it's something you'd see at a local throwdown and you'd excuse it at a local throwdown because at local throwdowns, they're constrained for space. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that this happens, which is in the run jerk events, mm -hmm. which came down to seconds. Like, do you have an extra two seconds to get a jerk up three times through? That's three extra reps. The three reps was first place to 10th place. Mm -hmm. It was massive. Mm-hmm. Some athletes had to travel farther to their barbell than others. Mm. That's like inexcusable at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. You go, well. Because there was two rows, right? Yes, they're you, staggered. Yeah. Got and it. they're always, this is like, CrossFit did such a good job of you, they, of like creating the loop runs. Yep. Where everyone, I mean, we do it in our affiliates. Yeah. Like yeah. we do it here to make sure everyone's running the same distance. Yep. It's also a loop run. Like you have to be but able to do they didn't the stagger the runs at all. To they didn't stagger the runs. It's so yeah. easy to do it where you like, just have the athletes start at their barbell and the barbell is mm. the loop that they run around. I mean, it's like, it's yep. so simple. Yep. It's so simple. Or the easy fix. I mean, it's it's crazy and bonkers to like, the. so the reason that they have to do that is because they're constrained for space. Yep. They made, they literally made the space. Mm -hmm. Like the literally, they built the space. They built the field. The field does not exist anymore. They tore it down, and every year they built the they build the field to the specs of the competition. Yep. It to me, it's inexcusable for why they would do that. Mm -hmm. And you go, the justification is well, it's only fifteen feet. Yep. Okay, so if it was a hundred feet, would you say that's fair? No. Of course not. Yeah. Like it's so unfair. Where is that? Yeah. So if it's not a hundred feet. When does it become right. even? <laughs> right. Is it at 50 feet? Yeah. No, that's not fair. Is it at 20 feet? No, that's not fair. Is it at 15 feet? No, that's not fair. It's at zero feet. Mm -hmm. It's a fair leveled playing field. You have to create a level playing field for all athletes. That to me is just a, an astronomical miss. It's something that you would allow at a local throwdown, but you should never see at the games. Yeah. All right, I don't, want, I don't want to end on a negative poo-poo. That's, huh. that's not how we roll here. So anything maybe we didn't talk about, nothing on your list that's maybe worth mentioning as a, as a you know, left a good taste in your mouth and we can kind of wrap the conversation up with? Okay, uh, yeah, so we'll go like a, um, 10 A, a and B. So I <laughs> sure. both of these, there's two yeah. more. The first one is, love the way they did the cuts this year. Mm, yep. Cuts are good. Yeah. I, I want cuts. I know people are like, if you're, if people that watch from home, I get why you don't you don't like cuts, but when you're at the events, you're watching eight heats yep. of the same workout. Yep, could be like, between men and women. Oh my god! Yeah. Yes, four heats of men, four heats of women. It's just nauseating, yep. and it's not. And so to get down to a lower, and they only went to six heats. It's of three of guys, three of girls. I don't like, and I think that like that it was only for the last day. And they kept 30, so they allow middling to happen, which is also cool, meaning like people from other heats do well and they yep. enter the top 10. I, th I thought the, he the cuts thing was 
and you didn't hear anybody complain about it. Like usually there's lots of, yeah. it was really well done this year. So really like that one. Next one I really like this year, and this is going to be, this isn't going to affect anybody other than <laughs> 40 people, which is um, the way they took care of the coaches this year. Mm. Um, in years past, coaches have been more of a nuisance to them. I can't know how else to say it, but they already need to take care of 80 athletes, and now they've taken care of 80 coaches as well. That's additional logistics, manpower, time. It's a lot. And this year they did a, a really phenomenal job and it was very much appreciative of um, making us feel welcome, like an asset, appreciated, cared for, a part of the events. And it seems to make sense considering that's like the business model mm -hmm. of HQ yep. is creating coaches. Yep. So we are kind of, yes, the athletes, yes, it's Forging Elite Fitness, but the business model is affiliates, which is coaches, and seminars, which is building coaches. Yep. So it, I, I, I think it it makes sense to celebrate yeah. both of those. Yeah, in the same way the game celebrate the elite yes. of the elite of the athletes. coaches there the coaches are the are. elites that are getting the people to be there. Yep. And maybe in years past it was kind of like, well, the athletes are the ones getting themselves there, and you guys because it was yep. in the past, and it was like you guys are the the wives and husbands. <laughs> who are lugging bags yeah. around for them. Yeah. Some people bring their moms and dads yeah. as coaches. That era is gone. Yeah, like these guys are professional athletes yeah. with professional coaches. The vast majority of them have camps. coaches. And yeah, and yeah, yeah, the vast majority. It is very, very rare to see a husband, wife, or friend back there supporting an athlete. It is professional coaches back there doing professional work. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to see them recognize that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right, we'll wrap this up. Are you excited about the kind of the new regime of of the games? You know, thinking about the next two, three, four years, you, or do you feel like this was a good harbinger of like, oh, this is gonna be fun for the next couple of years? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's not that Castro did Castro did a as good of a job as anybody possibly could have done in the world to get the sport to where it is. But everything, yep. like fresh blood is always yep. good at a certain inflection point. Not fresh blood for fresh blood's sake, yep. but at a certain inflection point being almost two decades in seems like this is an appropriate place for it. And I am excited about that. If they were to announce that Dave's coming back, cool. Even like this new kind of like, Ooh, here's, we got this kind of like pendulum swing a little yeah. bit this way. I still think it was beneficial. Love it. All right, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Everybody out there. Thank you. Everybody out there. I don't know why I'm stumbling over that. Thank you for everybody out there listening. Thank you for your writings and your reviews. Ben and I will be back next week for another episode. Jason. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.